Let it go. Wow. Let it go. Whatever you brought here, let it go. Shalom. Ah, wow. We come in breath and we come in security, man. Love to the tribe. If it ain't about Jay Stu, it ain't about shit. <laughs> Yo. We just vibing out, man. You know, doing a little reading. I hope you uh, enjoy that type of thing. Gotta keep it flowing, man. Be moving water. Like my sister. Like my sister Ty Battle. Like the Battle family. Love to the family. Love to Chris Battle. CJ. All the family. All the Battle family. All that pure water, man, that keeps coming. You know this. <laughs> you know we do the uh, Ty Battle poetry night, man. And the sister keeps us going with the moving thread. You know what I mean? Of that moving water. How I will die. I mean, just feel this for a second. You know, just let it go. Those are your rocks, your water. That's your water, that's your frequency. This is your land. Hawa Uda, Judah, Yuda. Let's get it. All right, my sister, drop that drop, man. Let's get it. Love to the sister tie battle. We appreciate the flow. Vibration is law, and law is vibration. Written in your commandments is an understood vibration. The laws are marked on your heart for a continual revelation. Your framer and shaper demand exclusive dedication. Offer thawada to Hawa for endless and pure elation. Dodge the hijacks. Avoid lies and fabrication. Migrating to you, dog. Come on. Migrating to you, dog. How I would die. To avoid prophesied damnation. Damn. Keepers of the CUV. Keepers of the cub. Experience constant salvation on Mount Zion. The lions form the family of Drop Nation. Come out to play. Yo. Ahab, ahab, much ahab to the sister. Ty Battle for dropping it on the family. Man, thought I die. I mean, you can break this down in so many ways, in so many parts. You can meditate on this, man, just like, you know what I mean? <laughs> just like that water. This this is the water. This is the flow. I mean, can we run it back? 
break it down. Vibration is law and law is vibration. Come on. Written in your commandments is an understood vibration, frequency. Commandments are energy, frequency. Those are your realities. That's your real energy. Your energy forms reality, vibration, realities, commandments. The laws are marked on your heart for a continual revelation. You keep digging on it, man. You can't stop. You keep moving your feet. You can't stop, you know what I'm saying, getting the drop right now, man. <laughs> we have, we're have we having a continual revelation. Your frame and shape of your mother and father. Your breath, your foundation. Wow. wow. Demand exclusive dedication. This is an exclusive affair. Amos 3, you only of all the families on earth have I known. We offer the Wada to Hawa for endless and pure elation. Dodging the hijacks, avoiding the lies and fabrication. Hawa migrating to Hawa to avoid prophesied damnation. Keepers of the CUV experience constant salvation on Mount Zion, the lion. Form the family of Drop Nation. Y'all, send that a hop. You know, leave your comment, man. Let Top Battle and the Battle family know that you appreciate, you know what I mean, the flow. That you are the water. The pure water. Wow. All right, man. Let's uh, go on inside, man. It's, it's getting a little, uh, you know what I'm saying? I can see, you know, it's, it's going to get a little cold. You know, the weatherman said it might be a little, uh, a little thunder, a little lightning. You know what I mean? Let's go and get cozy. Everybody come inside. Get by the fireplace a little bit. We're going to do some reading. You know what I'm saying? Let me fix this fireplace. We gotta get it all ready. Get it all ready for the drop. You know what I'm saying? There we go. All right. We're gonna get cozy now. I told y'all we're gonna do some reading. Um, get back in that Forbidden Histories, man. This is a continuation of a great series. You know, I think one of a lot of our favorite uh, series. This PDF is so dope, man. Love to sell my love to the beautiful sister that uh, dropped this on us. You know what I mean, love to all the family that continues to drop that drop. Uh, you know, Ty Battle also dropped uh, that Greater Exodus drop on us, and I dropped that PDF. I actually put it on our Google Drive since we're still building the library up, man. I'm working on it, y'all. Working on this side and working on two sites at once, man, and doing all that, man. So, all right, cool. Our fireplace is good. We're cozy, so. You know, much love for all the help, man, and, and, and the offers of help and, and all those that are really, really, uh, you know, putting the energy to support this vision. All praise our creator. So keep supporting Jay Stu. Click on that link. Hit that GoFundMe. 
you know what I'm saying, peace to the king, peace to the queen, Camellia, you know what I'm saying, they are expecting, you know, soon, man, and, and I think maybe a couple months or so, so, um, you know, this is our tribe, man, you know what I mean, we're doing everything we can to be in a position uh, so that when, you know, they're ready to step foot back on that land, we have a pot ready for them, you know what I'm saying, to continue to support, um, you know, our migration, you know what I'm saying, our CUV, and, uh, you know what I'm saying, once we get closer to that date, We'll do more to, uh, you know, set up, a, you know, another GoFundMe or some other system so that we can get funds directly to them, you know, for whatever their, you know, baby needs are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All that newborn stuff. If y'all know about it, it's a lot. So we'll, we'll set up something else, you know what I'm saying, so that we can do that direct. Um, so whatever you want to, you know what I'm saying, send, send their way specifically for the birth of their first child, man, uh, we can set that up as well. So... Look forward to supporting the tribes is what we do. I love y'all. 1,000. And, uh, yeah, man, let's get into it. Oh, yeah, first, first, man. Again, love to the sister type battle. This drop right here, drop poetry night, man. Vibration is law and law is vibration. You know, peace and power to the sister, man. Peace and power to the sister for uplifting the tribe with the frequency. We're just talking that CUV. And again, like I told y'all, man, the sister dropped this PDF on us, man, the Greater Exodus, and get that last drop, man, because you know what we're talking about. You know, this ain't no play play. Just wanted to get a piece of it. And uh, let me try to get my page. You know, I got a little bit of the preface last time. I'm going to go quick because I want to get into uh, this Forbidden History. I believe it's chapter 16. Well, let's get this, man. This is this is a powerful PDF right here, man. A lot of babies in this bathwater. We talk surfing the wave. We talking the greater exodus. You know, pretty much being the hypothesis or the theory again. Our, this this ain't no brand new wave we're surfing. It's it's always been there. We're just connecting it with frequency. You know what I'm saying? We're combining that four three two, man. We're combining that Torah, man. We're combining that indigenous truth, man. We're combining orientation in this classroom and love to all the tribe because we're all one giant classroom, man. One giant organism. So the greater exodus, an important pentateuchal criticism based on the archaeology of Mexico and Peru. So I just want to get to this chapter right quick. If I can remember, man, you know, it's been... So much uh, drop, man. Love to all y'all, man. Just dropping so much drop, man. <laughs> Get in higher Mars classroom, man. And teacher's classroom, man. I mean, so much drops going on. Get in Uno. Get into the root of it all's classroom, man. Uh, man, you know what I'm saying? You got to get to the root. That's all it is, too. <laughs> got to get to the root. All right, man. So, you know, we got this last time. This is out the preface. Uh, but the author ventures to make the apparently... Apparently, bold suggestion that the original migration took the opposite direction, not the direction from Asia or Africa here, but from here to Asia or Africa. The proper and original home of the Shemitic or Negro copper color race found here is America. And the greater exodus was one which might well enough have taken 40 years for it was the movement of a race from Mexico and Peru up through North America. So he's tracing a particular migration of what he's called, you know, going back up through the Bering Strait into Asia. But we know that Preston Jonathan had all types of connects and ways that they were connecting. He's the Preston John of the three Indians. Once in Asia, the tendency was to move southward. The immigrants casting off portions again and again, such as the Afghans, which found suitable countries and permanently dwelt in them. The main body making its way into Africa and settling on the fruitful soil of Egypt. So, <laughs> Horace Butler won't want to hear that. And neither will a lot of, you know what I'm saying, folks that's coming out of these public schools, you know, just regurgitating the same information. You know what I mean? So, this is daring. This is a daring, right? This this author makes a bold statement. This is bold, right? This author ventures to make the apparently bold suggestion. So if it was bold and win 1903, 
This is published in London in 1903, and it's bold if we say it in 2017 too, huh? A thousand years from now, that's still gonna be bold. All right, so, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're not off our rocker here, you know, when we talk about the exodus from Egypt, but we're going from here to there. So again, getting uh, Brother Higher Mars class, man, he's, uh, you know what I'm saying, continuing to break down the drop with the, um, you know, Joseph and the, uh, you know, with the Grand Canyon and all that, man, and, and how that connects, man, to the uh, migration patterns, man. I mean, all of it is the indigenous truth. All of it is the drop. We're talking about Joseph and the Grand Canyon. And again, teaches all up in that uh, wonderful wave as well, man. So get all that. Uh, where was I, man? I think I was on page 100, man. Let's go get 100 right quick. As we surf the wave. Yeah, I told y'all I might get a little rainy. You know, it was cool earlier, right? It was nice. We were sitting outside. Chilling with the rocks. But now it's cool, too. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's nice to hear a little bit of rain. You know what I'm saying? Let the, let the earth do its thing. Let the sounds be the sound. As long as we're cozy, as long as we got the fireplace going, let me make sure. Make sure we got the fireplace going, man. All right, okay. All right. As long as we're cozy, you know what I mean? You good? All right. Let's go. Oh, yeah, that's a good one, too, to pass on. We got to get back into that. I'm going to stay on point now, because... Oh, 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 we're talking Moloch worship in the Canaan Knights. Oh, man. We're talking Florida. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, okay. Stay on point. Yeah, we got a little weather going on now, man, but it's nice, you know. As long as we got something to read on. Uh-huh. Passing some good stuff, you know. I know, I know. All right, the leaders of the people, chapter 10. Ah, uh, <laughs> you know, when you start paying attention to the signs, to the signs, to the X marks the spot, and you know, you're talking Joshua and the cross, Joshua, cross, Joshua, cross. Let's go. The leaders of the people, the Hebrew books of Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, and Judges are invaluable as a virgin mine of mythology they are of the utmost importance so some just see it as mythology a virgin mine of mythology invaluable all right well let's put together the myth let's put together the myth we got to put together the mythos they are of the utmost importance and as an aid in recovering the primeval types of Egyptian thought which in turn will interpret the Hebrew writings all right G Massey oh okay because we were just talking G Massey in the book of the beginnings we'll get it will interpret the Hebrew writings and permit of their being understood as they never have been so he says the primeval types of e types of Egyptian thought, which in turn will interpret the Hebrew writings and permit of their being understood as they never have been and never could be apart from their original purpose and manner of setting forth. All right, let's go. And it is only when archaeologists and Egyptologists study to grasp the right meaning of certain passages in these books that they will be able to solve clearly many problems which now appear incapable of solution. Brooks Bay is greatly puzzled because nowhere do the inscriptions contain one syllable about the Israelites. This is as if in ancient Dutch and French history one would be puzzled at not meeting with an account of the Boers. The Israelites are a later idea, an offshoot from the greater migration, which finally stopped and settled down in Egypt. As the Boers are a later offshoot of the French and Dutch. And in no other way can the problem be solved. After the most careful research, it has been found that, that 
neither the time nor ethnology of the Hyksos can be settled with anything approaching to accuracy. But we know the chronology is all over the place. And, you know, obviously he's talking about mythos and, you know, uh, these Israelites uh, not being, a, how did he put it? How they're a later offshoot of the Great Migration or how no inscriptions are containing a, a syllable about the Israelites. Well, let's just keep reading. Let's keep reading. Because you already know that that's not true. You already know about your Paleo. You already know about your Backcrete Stones. You already know about the, the Michigan Tablets. And he does too. So we're going to keep reading about this. Let's not jump the gun. <laughs> Alright, so nor the ethnology of the Hyksos can be settled with anything approaching to accuracy. We're just talking accuracy. Let's go. Josephus says that his people, the Jews, were the Hyksos. Hmm. That's what Josephus is saying. So we're talking Hyksos. Josephus says that his people, the Jews, were the Hyksos. And he also says that they were called captives in the sacred books. This is on the authority of Maneto. Now, Hek, H-E-K, in the Egyptian, is a ruler, a king, while Shos is servants. So that the Hek Sos of the earliest times must have been exactly like the Memluks, M-M-L-U-K, a slave of modern times. The oldest form of government in the in the world is a theocracy a people governed by a divinity who made his will known through priests and lawgivers this was the government of the hebrews the aztecs and the tribes of the north american israelite uh, indians which are israelites as we know because we're connecting them to aztecs and hebrews so like I said, don't jump the gun when he's just talking about what can be put together with accuracy or, you know, what's mentioned about these so-called Israelites. Of course, we don't call ourselves, they, we, we never called ourselves Israelite. So we can't fall in love with these titles. King David never said, we the Israelites, all right? These are titles, these are abstractions of the story that they're putting together, trinkle back into our hands. So don't fall in love with titles when you're the seed, you're the seed. You don't need a title to be the seed. You are, I am, we are. We exist. Energy, frequency, vibration is bigger than titles, okay? Especially when you deal with chronology and accuracy. So Josephus is saying that his people, the Jews, were Hyksos. And he also says that they were called captives in the sacred books. All right, so we got the Hexos, meaning slave. Now, the oldest form of government is a theocracy, a people governed by divinity who made his will known through priests and lawgivers. And this is the government of the Hebrews, not was, but is. The Aztecs and the tribes of North American Indians. And that just reminds me right quick of the... Uh, Yo, it's B, man. I can't make this fast. Make this fast. At the same time, we're going to take our time. But I do want to get to some good stuff, man. So I will uh, stay on the one for y'all. Oh, come on. Don't tell me my link is bad. You sometimes gotta try twice. Let this be a lesson. Don't give up the first time. Sometimes press reload. OSB. All right, man. We'll be back in there, man. We got some good stuff to get to. But I just want to get to the. Uh, I want to get. To, yeah, yeah. I want to get to the glossary, man. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Now when he said when we're reading a people governed by 
divinity who made his will known through priests and lawgivers. This was the government of the Hebrews. The government of the Hebrews. The government of the Hebrews. See how we put it together is we get babies out. We put it together with other babies to get the substantiating, to get the witnesses to help form a theory. And we keep asking questions, but our theory grows stronger with more backing, with more recon. They have theories back with research. We have theories back with research. So what? So this was the government of the Hebrews, the government of the Hebrews, the Aztecs and the tribes of North American Indians. And when you look up Algonquin, Algonquin, what does it say? The United States of North American Indians before the destruction by the Christians. Now your black ass is a Christian, right? But before that, you had a government, a Hebrew government, a what? A Hebrew, a government of the Hebrews, the Aztecs and tribes of the North American Indians. Tribes of the North American Indians, Algonquin. The United States of North American Indians before their destruction by the Christians. Convert or die, Papal Bull, right? Algonquin. I just thought that was really interesting. I'm going to put a beginning. Because I already know I'm going to want this. Because we just mentioned Massé. All right, so this was the government right, of the Hebrews, the Aztecs, and the tribes of North American Indians before their destruction and invasion, 1828. Copper color race is found here, but now your titles are given to the descendants. It was also the government of the Kushites. Whom I take to have been a Central Asian people. Hmm. To it succeeded a government by kings and chiefs. And the first of these chiefs as far as the Hebrews were concerned were Moses and Joshua. Were the first of the chiefs. Alright. Let's stay on point. I was going to go back into the. Let's just go. Let's go. So Moses and Joshua were the first of the chiefs. Now how does this play with this Kitsukoto? Now this is another source talking about the Kitsukoto drop. Let's go. In the Toltec mythology, they keep calling you a myth and allegory, right? Let's put the foundational legend together. Toltec. We got on the Toltec and the uh, views of the Hebrews and the Toltec. The Israelite connection to customs. So the Toltec mythology or reality of North America, we find Huimac and Kitakoto leading their people through the long wanderings recorded in the picture writings. The picture writings. So while you don't see the mention of Rooks Bay is a great, greatly puzzled because nowhere do the inscriptions contain one syllable about the Israelites. Well, were Joshua and Moses, were Huey, Mock, and Kitsukoto talking Israelite? Did the name or the term or the frequency Israelite come out the mouth of Huey, Mock, or Kitsukoto? So they're talking frequency, not no new title, frequency. So in the Toltec reality of North America, we find Huey Mock and Kitsukoto leading their people through the long wanderings recorded in the picture writings. Huey Mock, like Moses, wrote the code of laws for the nation. Kitsukoto, like Joshua, led the people into the promised land or the land of promise. <laughs> And made them know and obey the laws of Moses or 
Hawa Mak. This is not Huey, it's Hawa, Hawa Ma. Hawa Ma. And Hawa Shuwa. Hawa Shuwa. There is no J, right? I Jack 101. Kids are cold too. Now, where are we? Love to Paco who dropped this on us a long time ago. Cause that's what Drop Nation is. Let's go. Book of the Beginnings by Gerald Massey. Now he just mentioned Gerald Massey. Let's get that right quick. So right here you see G Massey. G Massey. Alright, so he's already digging on digging on the wave that we've been surfing. Paco dropped this a while back. Let's go. As Shu and Anhar in, in Egyptian mythology and Moses and Joshua conducted their people with the solar orb round the circle of signs overcoming the opposing powers postulated by the early men. So in Toltec mythology or reality, Hawa Ma or Hawa Matsin, Hawa Matsin and Kitsukuotu conducted their people through the pilgrimage and wanderings recorded in their picture writings Hawa Mak like Moses wrote the code of laws for the nation so this is a quote right and conducted the civil government United States of the Aztec <laughs> of North American Indians before the destruction by the Christians and we got on how Kitsukotu and the Mormon, you know, doctor has been related to their Christ. But of course, they couldn't do too much because of the whole serpent connection to Kitsukotu, which we know now is only the fiery flying dragon dealing with Moses' rod or Hawamak's rod or staff that turned into a flying fiery dragon. Come on. Kitsukoto in relation to Hawama plays the part of Joshua or Hawashuwaha, Hawashahua. When Kitsukoto began to give the laws instead of Huimak or Hawa Hawama, he sent a crier to the top of the mountain of Alcry, whose voice could be heard for three hundred miles round. Hawashahua follows Moshe or Hawama. As the leader of Israel and instructs his people to go up against Jericho, his mountain of outcry, and assail it with the shout that ought to have been heard at an equal distance, and it was loud enough to make the walls fall flat. The old red land, Hawa, Hawa, Lepalan, was the name of the original home in the north from which the Toltecs migrated. Their leader, Kitsukoto, wore a long robe marked with crosses. Crosses is the what? The sign. Tau. The sign signifies him as the one who crosses. We're not talking about, oh, Jesus died on the cross. Christians, abstraction, illusion. No, this cross is Paleo Picto Hebrew, meaning a sign, but a sign of what? A sign. The signs identifies him, Joshua, Hawashahua, Kitsukoto, signifies Hawashahua as the one who crosses Kitsukoto. Attain the land of promise. Promised land, man. He brought his people to the promised land. And in his golden reign, an ear of wheat grew so large that one man could hardly carry it. Joshua led the people into the land flowing milk with milk and honey, where a single bunch of grapes was a load for two men. Moses is placed in the cleft of a rock, whilst the Lord, Hawa, goes by. And tradition asserts the print of his body to have been engraved on the stone visible to this day. Let's get it, man. So we're talking Kitsukoto. We're talking the Book of the Beginnings. So we got this, the Toltec mythology of North America. We find Hawa, Mak, and Kitsukoto leading their people through the long wanderings regarding, recorded in the picture writings. Hawa, Mak, 
like Moses wrote the code of laws for his nation. Kitsukoto, like Joshua, led the people into the land of promise and made them know and obey the laws of Hawama, Moses, Moshe, Meshi, Meshiko. The land from which they migrated was called Old Red Land. Red Man. Copper color race is found here, Red Man. Ruddy Man. When Kitsukoto came to the land of promise, or promised land, it was found to be a fruitful, very fruitful land, where an ear of wheat grew so large that one could hardly carry it. So we just got that out of the book of beginning, so you see how we're playing here. See how we got them here, you know what I mean? Let's go. But watch a while in the same way. Led his people into a land where a single bunch of grapes was alone for two men. Moses was placed in a cleft of a rock. Alright, so this is what we just got. Moses was placed in a cleft of a rock while he said the Lord before, right? They said, Yahovah, Nahawa. See, that V is a W, a W. And we don't deal with Hijack City. Was passing by. And Jewish tradition has it that the print of his body was engraved on a rock. Hawa Mak was placed between two rocks where he could see the great spirit. And the impression of his hand is stamped on one of these rocks. A Franciscan monk named Vasquez translated the chronicles of the last of the Quiche Kings. Man, this is what we got to start digging on, the Quiche Kings. In his translations, we are told that the Toltecs are descended from the children of Israel, whose deliverer was Moses. Toltec, Aztec, deliverer, Moses, Joshua, let's go. That they crossed the Red Sea and fell into idolatry, that under a chief named Tanub, they arrived at last at a place called the Seven Caverns where they built a town. Man, how does this relate to the seven cities of gold? But the good monk, like a great many others, worked a story that he knew into one of which he knew nothing and he might have succeeded fairly well if he had not given himself away by using a little one little word. That word is Tanu. Ta is an Egyptian it is the Egyptian for crossing over the water. Hmm. Noob is Lord or Master. And Tanub was the leader who brought his people across the water. Bang! From North America. Tanub is the leader who brought his people across the water. From North America. Where we find the word in the popular tra traditions to Egypt. Wow. Where we find the word in popular traditions to Egypt. Where we find it on the public monuments. Another name in the Egyptian for Ta Nub. Now it wasn't a horse brother breaking down the Ta Mary connection. This was Ta. Ta Mary he was talking about Egypt being here. Ta is on ha. My shoe. Now, Anhar means conductor or leader, and my shoe is Moses. Musa, Moses, Mashu, Moses, and Har. And that's why it says in the book of the beginnings as Shu and Anhar in Egyptian mythology, and Moses and Joshua. So Shu is being connected to Moses and Anhar is being connected to Joshua. Shu and Anhar. Shu. We're going to dig on the shoe, man. Come on. Surfing the wave, man. All right, man. So we got the Tanu, the leader who brought his people across the water from North America. From North America. From North America. Anhar means conductor or leader in my shoe is Moses. Oh yeah, you know, we're still getting cozy. We still got the fireplace running. I'm about to get to the main event. But yeah, this is just some uh, great connection. And like I said, 
The Mormons try to connect Kitsukoto with Jesus, but he just doesn't fit. Why not? I mean, because that's how they're trying to connect it over here. Like, oh, yeah, you know, they, they have to connect. They have to. They have to try. All right, let's just belly flop and go. I know we got things to do. Right, I'm start with this quote here. Let's get it bigger. In Mexico's great central Mesa, where Ixtila, um, can we know? Come on, this is, this is a challenge. Ixtilil, go get to Lil. All right, that's the best I could do. Live the name by which the fair god of ancient America was generally known as Kitsukoto. We just got that Joshua connection. Now, Kitso, let's get let's break down the Kitsukoto name. We broke this down before. Let's get it again. Kitzo was the name of the beautiful bird with the resplendent long green feathers and dainty crest. Koto is the ancient Mexican word for serpent. Thus, the name Kitsukoto means literally Kitzo bird serpent. Kitsukoto was the name applied to the new world god or the American god or the creator whose promised land is here who was in the form of a man bearded, white robed, and a great teacher of moral principles, the Koto or serpent, was an ancient symbol of Israel's Messiah. Again, the Koto or serpent was an ancient symbol of Israel's Messiah. So we got the serpent thing twisted, right? We got the serpent twisted, right? We got the serpent twisted because we're just talking about the fiery flying dragon, the serpent that devours the venomous snakes. The serpent that devours the venomous snakes. This serpent devours the venomous snakes. Let's go. Editor note. Moses' raised serpent staff symbol was preserved by Israel for over 500 years and is clearly identified with Jehovah or Christ in the Book of Mormon. So they found so much foundation legend, man. This Joseph Smith, when he got here, that he had to use Kitsukoto or Joshua to connect to the other Joshua or who you call Yeshua or Shai or all these other things. But you're just talking Christ. Because they're just talking Christ. And they're trying to connect Kitsukoto to their Christ. One Joshua to the new Joshua. The foundational legend to the abstraction. Or else they wouldn't have to use it if it didn't have foundation. If it didn't have foundation to support the lie. They have to say this is this. Well damn that would mean. You know what I'm saying. Since this is what you know. 900 what they call 900 AD or so. Or, you know something like that. 1000. That would also mean that this is around 1000 AD, which supports the chronology of them adding a thousand years that the birth of their so-called Christ was not, you know, whatever, 5 BC and all that. It was 1053 AD, according to the Russian chronographer Anatoly Fedomenko. And if their Christ was born in 1050 or whatever, that means that this Joshua probably was born around then. That might be the real date of the birth of Kitsukoto, 1053, what they call A.D. So the Moses' raised serpent staff symbol was preserved by Israel for over 500 years and is clearly identified with their Christos in the Book of Mormon. But... Garth Norman has researched the etymology of Kitsukoto and found that Kitsa in Nahutu means to raise something up. So Kitsukoto literally means raised serpent. 
identical to Moses raised serpents on a staff. So we're going to connect this to Moses, but after we connect it to Moses, we go a step further and connect it to Kitsuko, to Joshua. As we factor in Hawa Mak, and that Kitsukoto was continuing the law. When Kitsukoto began to give the laws instead of Hawa Mak, he sent a cry to the top of the mountain of outcry. So Joshua continued Moses' journey, right? We're just talking Tanub. Man, we're just talking about Hawa, the great leader who brought his people across the water, right? From North America, right? We're talking Moses' raised serpent, you know, staff, right? So the raised serpent is identical to Moses' raised serpent on a staff. The Kitzel serpent symbolism is encountered on the ancient artifacts of Middle America. Feathered serpents occur on the facades of temples and palaces on ceramics so you see this all over the place but you're not relating it to your Moshe to your Hawama to your Moses and Joshua in their English language to your Hawama and Kitsugoto your priest king you're not relating this to your creator how can a dragon relate to my creator <laughs> The Kitsukoto serpent symbolism is encountered in ancient artifacts in Middle America. Feathered serpents appear on the facades, facades, facades of temples and palaces on ceramics and stone sculptures, works, and in gold representations. Lord Kinsborough reports representations of the lifting of serpent frequently occur in Mexican paintings on symbols of the fair god include other symbols of the fair god include the cross now this is in mexico they're relating the cross to hawa because you're dealing with one who crosses as in one who crosses kids go to war long road marked with crosses the sign Identifies him as the one who crosses. Gets a call to attain the promised land. He crossed what? In his translations, we are told that the Toltecs are the descendants of children of Israel who delivered whose deliverer was Hawa Mak or Moses, and that they crossed the Red Sea and fell into idolatry, that under a chief called Tanu, they arrived at last at the place called the Seven Caverns. And as you know, in the Maya Quiche and the Papuva and the Annals of the Coxiquil, they're talking about following their chief with his staff parting the waters, right? And now you got the Tanu referring to your creator, leader who brought his people across the water from north america we're surfing the wave and now other symbols of the fair god include the cross and the mexican paintings now check it the quotations that follow are from the works of Ixtilicoquitl, translated and note annotated by hunter and ferguson all right let's get it and when they were in the height of their power, there arrived in the land a man whom they called Kitsukoto and others Huimak on account of his great virtues, considering him as just saintly, holy, and good, teaching them good deeds and words, the path of virtue, forgiving them for their vices and sins, giving laws and good doctrine. Now, Christians, don't that sound like you? But you're getting it from Kitsukoto and Huey Ma, Hawa Ma, which is why the Book of Mormons and Joseph Smith hijacked Kitsukoto to be their Joshua, to be their Yeshua, to be their Christ. But now nah, it's relating to your Joshua, your Moshe, Hawa Ma, on account of his great virtues, considering him as just saintly, holy, and good teaching them good deeds and words, the path of virtue, forgiving them their vices and sins, giving laws and good doctrine, and in order to refrain them from their pleasures and dishonesties, he instituted, established, 
fasting for them. And he was the first who worshipped and placed the cross, which they called, can't pronounce this, but you see it. Right? You see it. You see this. You do it. You do it. But I definitely see a HUA, which is Hawa in it. And other, this one right here, right? which means God of rains and of health and tree of sustenance or of life, tree of life. Editor's note. The name for the cross of Kitsukoto identified with the God of rain and the tree of life is a Book of Mormon concept. So Dr. Hijack found in Nephi's vision of the tree of life. That's what we just got. Nephi saw the tree of life was also a fountain of living waters, which represented the love of Hawa manifest through who they call their Christ or their anointed. Nah, we're talking Joshua. We're talking it's a goal to the tree being his sign and his gift of eternal life. See how they hijacked this into the being their Christ, right? In the Book of Mormon, we're talking kids of gold to. Let's go. This concept is illustrated in the Maya carving of Palen Palenque, where the fo foliated cross tree of fused with a God. Kitsukoto was a favorable, favorably disposed man, a grave aspect, white and bearded. So, you know, here's their quote trying to hijack him. All right, we're talking copper color races foul here. Let's go. He was the first who worshipped and placed the cross. All right. At that time, he went about taking leave of these people. He told them that in time to come, in a year, which should be called Ka Se or Se Akato. He would return. Oh, wait. Wait, he's going to return? Wait, Joshua Kitsukoto is going to return just like Christ is going to return. Man, you know, we still got some weather going on. But, you know, stay cozy. Drop's not going to get too exciting. You know? I'm just, uh, we're just talking Joshua. Right. So let's go to the book of Joshua. Don't be afraid. Chapter 3. I just want to see if you can see any similarities or correspond to anything. Okay. Okay, so three verse twelve. So you know again we're just comparing Joshua to, to this Jesus and this is what they did with Kids of Culture. So he's falling in between, right? Is he Jesus? Is he Moses? Nah, he's Joshua. It's Joshua's Joshua. They just these people aren't creative. He's Joshua, he's Joshua. There's only one Joshua that's relevant. That says he's also going to return. So this Joshua says he's going to return. That Joshua says he's going to return. This Joshua rocks the cross. That Joshua symbolizes the cross, the mark, the sign. This Joshua got 12 disciples. That Joshua got 12 disciples. You don't believe me? Joshua 3 and 12. Now, therefore, take you 12 men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of man. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest shall bear the ark of Hawa. Hawa of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. That the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above. And they shall stand up a heap. Take 12 men out of the tribes of Israel. Now this Jesus got 12 men. That Jesus got 12 men. Right. Let's get it quick. This 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 Joshua's going to return. He would return. And then his doctrine would be received. And his children would be masters. And possess the land. This is what Kitsukoto is talking about. Not Jesus. Not the Jesus that left you in Roman Greek captivity. Say I'll be back in 2000 years. Peace. I'm talking about the Joshua that 
marched you on your promised land, who they're calling kids to go to, rocking the raised fiery serpent, got you on your promised land, said I will return, also had what? Now therefore take you twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man, twelve men, twelve men, twelve men, all right, let's get to some, you know, the last of this. He would return to them, and then his doctrine would be received, and his children would be masters and possess the land. All right? And they, and that they and their descendants would pass through many calamities, man. Having you so called Negro, copper color rates found here by the European 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary, and persecution, so called Negro. And many other prophecies which were made by him. We're talking Joshua, Kitsukoto. We're talking a raised fiery serpent, flying dragon, which later were clearly many other prophecies which were made by him, which later were very clearly seen. So he prophesied, he led you to your promised land. He having preached and said the things in the majority of the cities of the Olmecas and Kitsukoto. Kalankas, and in particular in that of Cholula. Oh, we're going to connect this Cholula to the Monk's Mound and back to Preston John, where he most visited Cholula and seeing the little fruit brought about from by his doctrine, he returned through the same part from whence he had come, which was by the Orient disappearing through Kotzolkoatko. Man, man, man. We're just talking Joshua. All right, man. You got those links. Let's go. Forbidden histories. And this is a chapter I kind of stumbled on, man. I was going to get something else. And this kind of just brought me on in, man. So don't mind me. Surfing the wave with you. Make sure our uh, fire is still burning, you know. Sometimes it goes out. I have to add some more logs, man. Get Hiram over here, man. Get Jay Stu. The fire starters, man. All right, cool, 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 cool. We're good. We're good, we're good. Oh, yeah. I was going to drop on this key glyph, man, but uh, that, that'll be next time. I don't even want to. As you see, we're getting very scientific here, man. It's a beautiful thing. We're talking artifacts. We're talking forbidden histories of America. All you got to do is do your digging, and you'll get it. All you got to do is do some digging. So let's get a piece of this, man. Let's see how we do. Now, we're going to dodge the hijack. You know, obviously, this author, you know what I'm saying, sometimes tries to slide in themselves and write themselves into things but for the most part it keeps it pretty trill so let's just get it the following story is based on information which has been shared with me over many years and from many sources primarily from countless legends and myths as they are called in over 600 source material books exploration of documents exploration documents interviews and few and a few and, uh, and first-hand accounts of those who of the earliest centuries encountered and interviewed those who were here when they arrived, although written for the most part in the words of Tuscoro. So we're getting chapter 17 out of the Forbidden Histories of America. Man, again, love to sell mine for this drop. It's chapter 17, the narrative of Tuscoro. Let's go. I know. You're like, who's Tuscoro? Let's learn. Let's learn. We're still getting cozy. So although written in the most part, for the most part in the words of Tuscoro, who is of Native American descent. Now, I don't know if he's hijacked or not. We're going to kind of figure this out together. But from what I kind of dug, it's definitely some drop in it regardless. I myself am descent of the most ancient. However, the storyline is that of oral tradition. In the words of those who spoke it, the oral tradition which has existed since man first inhabited the continent. In many cases, the oral tradition used in this work is considered simply because the physical 
evidence and or other written source material I have seen over these many years and validates that which was given in oral tradition. Often oral tradition is used due to the fact that had the writings form, had the, had the written form of ancient script been found or discovered by the world of science, if not destroyed or rendered as a hoax, it would have and likely still to this day would end up buried in the depths of, of the Smithsonian under the religiously followed guidelines of the manifest destiny. So we just got some of that doctrine discovery, manifest destiny, oral tradition has never been considered by science as a viable source of history simply because it was not found in written form. And that which had been found was destroyed, whisked away, or rendered a hoax or mythology under the previous mentioned guidelines. The indigenous of this land, so-called Negro, learned long ago that if their record were found by the many who have come to this land over many centuries, that it would be destroyed out of fear, rendered as a hoax, and suffer persecutions just as many others have in the past which have been discovered since those who claim to be civilized came here. It just isn't worth the risk. All right, so in this work, I may from time to time recite the source material or mention the evidence, but it is not my intent to prove anything herein. My intent is only to tell the story. The true secrets of the secrets of truth will see what is needed. All others, it is my hope. They simply enjoy the story. Whether society accepts the oral tradition of those who are descent from the most ancient of inhabitants of this land or not, in the kindest way I can put it, we just don't care. <laughs> we have nothing to prove as, as that day has come where in all truth will be known. And this is from Sign Daniels. All right, let's go. So this is just, you know, a translation. And again, you know. You know, we're just going to dodge the hijack and make it happen. So we're talking Utah. We're talking Utah. Let's go. I am called by some to score. I am the Turtle Clan. I am of the Turtle Clan. All right, Turtle Island, Turtle Clan, man. Love to the homie Turtle Gang. I am descent of those who first came to this land after it was destroyed by much water. Hmm. After it was destroyed by water, like the sinking of Atlantis, right? I am also descent of the many white people who have come to this land in the recent and ancient past. So he's saying, I got a little hijack in me. My people, meaning those considered the indigenous and of my ancient tribe of them who remain now live in Northeast. They migrated from the West long ago before the man that white people call Columbus came to this land. They came to the place they now live in the Northeast at a time the white man refers to as approximately 700 AD. We're talking about the time of Kalelus. Let's go. At a time in which there were many peoples in wars, wars, Kalelus, Theodore Rus. Let's go. Before they migrated east, they lived in and around a place which was then called the place of the Blue Spruce. Also, known by many other names and at that time there was a vast lake left over from a precious large inland ocean which dispersed as a result of, of, of upheavals and convulsions when the sun took a different path i know that's a lot but we're talking about a lot of water being around this udall area and the sun took a different path well damn if it's going from what Rise in the east, sets in the west, and did it at one point rise in the west and set in the east? Let's go. The sun took a different path. This was at a time when man began to measure time as A.D. Hmm. So when they started measuring time as A.D., B.C., A.D., the sun took a different path? Interesting. Let's go. This was not Lake Bonneville, as the people of Utah call it. It was called the Grand Canyon. What was called the Grand Canyon was deepened when the waters fled to the south. So we're just talking Utah, but they're saying back then they didn't call it Lake Bonneville. Our grandfathers say it came from the east, which is now north. What? Our grandfathers say it came from the east, which is now north. So we're talking about a complete orientation switch. Right? Not the earth switching. 
but something in the orientation of this plane was switched where our grandfathers say it came from the east which is now north and the sun took a different path when man began to measure time as AD can you dig on that let's go let's go this is beautiful man let's go so today this canyon we're talking Grand Canyon again get my man Hiram's you know what I'm saying uh, uh classroom all the family man uh, today, this canyon is much deeper, a thousand feet or more, because of this great exodus of water. We we know this because the ancient city it, and the Great Wall, where some of our people once lived, the entrance is now a thousand feet up the canyon wall. Wow. So this land around the lake and others was our homeland. It was good to us. We're talking you, dog. It had many large fish, some that could eat you, should you be careless, and many large turtles, and behemoth roamed free, and was a great work to us in those days before the sun hid from us. Wow, many things were larger than they are today, including our people who average eight to nine feet. So when people say, with more oxygen and more trees, we work bigger, we, we were giants, and you know, when you find... 10 feet skeletons. I mean, hey, that doesn't mean it was some hideous type of giant. It could have just meant it was one of your ancestors, man, with more oxygen. I have seen my dead ancestors, and they were large. Many people have lived here in this once near tropical environment. Even white people were here at one time, our friends, and of which day, today we are partly from. So whoever tribe he's from is definitely hijacked, you know what I mean, by these so-called white people you know friends so they were friends of them i wonder if they were part of any of these melanated tribes that were friends of these guys coming over and making treaties with but let's get the drop the waters which fed this lake which have flowed for as long as my people were there was greatly diminished as time went on from the time our grandfathers first came to this land across the West Sea from the great tower, Tower of Babel, hmm, that the Creator destroyed. So this person is saying he comes from one of these tribes dealing with this Babylon. Alright. Or migrating out of it. Alright, let's go. So my people came to this land across the West Sea from the great tower that the Creator destroyed and took the spoken words from many others and mixed them up. This is their first hand account. Interesting perspective, right? Babel. He let us keep our words, words which, which we have changed over the many years with only one surviving dialect, dialect which is for the most part we think original. Yet, when the earth shook in the days, the sun took a different path. The waters came up again from the mountaintops. Fountains of water flowed, some so large that the tops of mountains were removed. The tops of mountains were removed. So some of those mountains looked like they were sliced and some looked like they were just, some of those trees were just broken, right? Mountains were removed. Men of science say it was from glaciers from a time they call the Ice Age, a time that never was. These waters were known from all over this continent as those which exceeded all. Many of our brothers remained behind at this place even until those days when the waters again went underground after a day which my people call the day the earth moved. This was a time around 900 AD, right? So now you got this Anasazi migration after 900 AD from Udall, the Four Corners, into what they're now calling Tenochtitlan or Mexico. We're talking the Aztec. Let's go. We're talking Kitsikolta. We're talking Joshua. We're talking the Exodus. We're talking North America. We're talking the Americas. Copper Color Race found you. Columbus brought a Hebrew interpreter to talk to you. Kendrick Lamar says, Ezra. All right, let's go. So my people came to this land long ago, crossed the now West Sea in strange boats, described by the grandfathers as gourds, or what we now call a clam. It is said that if you know where to look, you can still see the remnants of these boats which are hidden in the sand. This was about 4,500 years ago. Many 
years later is when the white man began to come to this land. Romans, we're just talking Romani, Hebrew, those of India and many others have been coming here for a long time or are from here much longer than many would imagine. Hebrews have been here, India, Romani, Roma, India, all this is the same. Roma, Ra, Romani, Hebrew, Hebrew, India, all the same. Press the John of the three Indias, Indians, all the same. Cold words, copper color race, let's go. And many others have been coming here for a long time, much longer than many would imagine. They have mixed with our people and are a part of us today. Hmm. Our most distant and original ancestor today live high in the mountains of Mongolia. Interesting. So, you know, which tribe is this? Are they revealing themselves as, as the hijack? As the proxy? Where some of them chose to remain after our grandfathers left the tower. So did some of this proxy come over around this time? Many of them traveled on and became the fathers of many Asian people of today, especially the Chinese, who are mixed blood, very much like today's indigenous peoples of the Americas. So we're talking about the Mongol Chinese, you know what I'm saying, mixed, you know what I'm saying, uh, you, know, you know, basically proxy that you see when you Google Native American, you're pretty much talking about this, all right? So when the white man came here in the days of Columbus and Cortez, they supposed we were a backward people, a savage. Little did they know that we came from a great people who at one time had technologies by comparison. We're talking Atlantis, let's go. That was much greater than what they have achieved even by today's standard. When the people obey the creator and his laws, when the people obey the creator and his laws, he's giving you some game. You thought Jay Z gave you some game in 444? Which is interesting because 444 is 8 equals 444. And a lot of times they try to sell you on that 528 being a, a love frequency. 528, but 528 is C equals 528. On the scale, C equals 528 is A equals 444. And 444 is very close to 440. You're still in the 440. And now you have a hijack frequency 444. Choose up. So when the people obey the creator and his law, his frequency, the people are blessed with knowledge. When the people obey the creator and his law, Hawa, the people are blessed with his knowledge. When they do not, he will take it away. So he's giving you some drop. The majority of the knowledge he gave our people was taken away because they failed to obey his law. And misused the knowledge he gave them. Not all of the people lost this knowledge. And there are to this day some who have retained the knowledge. And have advanced far beyond the known world. And they remain hidden from the rest. It is the decree of the fathers told by their creator. That if they do not obey his law and serve only him. Amos 3. You of Oh, you only of all the, all the families have I known. You only so-called Negro of all the families have I known. You only of all the families have I known. It is the degree of the fathers told by the creator that if they do not obey his law frequency and serve him only and that they could not stay here on this land. To be here in the, on this land, which is why this corporation can't stand, you have to serve the creator only. This is the promised land, and you're going to have to choose up, get with it, or get left on. You have to serve him only that they could not stay here on this land, and that they would wipe, that he would wipe them off with his hand, because it is a sacred land, which is greater than all other lands. America, American, copper color race is found here by the European, stand up, you're from here, you're indigenous here, you're from a sacred land, stop letting them fool you, you come from another land, this is your sacred land, that's why they all want to be here, get some of this blessing, 
but it's going to be flipped on them and returned to you. Because it is a sacred land which is greater than all other lands. And that many over time would fight to take this land could lay loose for themselves and to find the many things that this land that makes this land much desirable. So who's looking for the gold? Who's looking for the drop that makes this land much desirable? It is a holy land. America, it is a holy land like that of Jerusalem and Israel of old. Or it is the Jerusalem and Israel of old. And it is a place where all things began, man. Body bag for the illusion. It is a holy land like that of Jerusalem and Israel of old. It is the place where all things began. He has removed many of my ancestors from this land because of their evil ways and he will continue to do so even until the end of time when time will be no more. When he makes good of the promises made to my people and the eleven brothers prom and the eleven brothers interesting promises handed down from our ancestors, which we now understand as Abraham, Jacob, or Israel. So, you know, you be you know. Is this either this guy is, you know, just hijacking himself in or he might be coming with that pure water, man. The leaders of the white man in general have always supposed we were a backward people that we didn't write anything. If we had showed them what when they came, their science scientists might have recognized it as an authentic history. But what would have what would have what would that have done to their plan to steal the land? And if they knew where these records or writings were today, they would no doubt destroy them because they are afraid, fear, they're afraid, they want to be safe. Our people learned long ago and were reminded in the days of the Spanish conquest that the white man was afraid of our beliefs because it refutes their belief when in fact our people knew who they're calling. Remember, this is a translation, the Christ, which they are also relating to. It's a cold too. All right. Let's get a little bit more. So we knew this anointed, or we knew our kids are or we knew our Hawashu, Hawa, our Joshua, better than they, and they set out to destroy the writings of our existence, our history, and genealogy. We know today that if the leaders of the white man knew where to find the histories of our people from the earliest of time, they would no doubt destroy it or call it a hoax or a mythology. So we resorted to oral tradition. Oh, brother, where's your writings? Where's your writings? We resorted to oral tradition like our brothers who do not write. When some of our history came to the white man, according to the creator, near 200 years ago, listen up, the people were afraid and tried to destroy it. Just as they have many times in the past, not even my people believed it at first. Not even my people believed it at first. And today, many still do not. I feel you, man. Today, those who have translated those words are still persecuted to a degree, degree. Even they have been become persecuted of their own people. Again, about 120 years ago, the message was given to my people of the Creator. But this time, by oral tradition, and again, those who lead the white man, those who lead the white man, again, tried to destroy it. Our people tried to honor the words to remember them with our ghost dance. But it made the white man afraid even more. When will, they stop, when will they stop trying to hide the truth? When will they stop being afraid? Why do they always try to excuse the creator from their science? If the people of this land do not come back to the creator. If the people of this land. America. The copper color race. The negro. If the negro does not come back to the creator. Of this land. And obey his laws. And cast off those things which are not of him. And are of man these traditions fourth of july every single pop you heard was you dying every single blast and firework you heard was your people dying and you 
It's like me knocking your ass out, telling you to get up and celebrate me knocking your ass out. Wake up, Negro. If the Negro would come back to the creator and obey his laws and cast off those things which are not of him and are of man, these people on this land now will also be removed from it. If the Negro would come back to the creator and cast off the hijacks, man, the people of this land, the invaders, will be removed from it. I do not excuse my words, nor do I apologize to those who choose to take offense by my words. Body bag for the illusion, man. And we're going to come back to this because he goes into even deeper drop, leaving the old world. We're going to talk about migration. Man. It's a beautiful thing, man, when we surf in the wave, hijack free. It's a beautiful thing when we surf in the wave, hijack free. Then we got time for a little dismount. I'll try to do a double dismount, but we'll see, man. We got this before. I love to Jay Stu, who reminded me of this drop. And again, we're talking about America, the promised land. What's inside this building? This is the Dome of the Rock. The only thing inside this building is a rock. A rock that has come to me that is exactly a copy of the Western United States. As you can see, hmm. by the end of this video, I know right now you're thinking, that's crazy, that's ridiculous. But by the end of this video, you're going to be able to see absolutely that not only does it look like it, shape like it, the topography on it is even exactly the same. So stick with me here as I go through some different maps and show you exactly what you're looking at. This is the map showing you that the uh, BLM, U.S. government, federal government, has purchased up 90% of the western United States. Hmm. The exact states that the Rock of the Dome cover. This is a, a uh, map showing you the ownership. Federal, state, local. The dark green on the left shows you that all the forests in the western United States are owned by the federal government through the Bureau of Land Management. We've all heard about the, ba the ranchers having battles, losing their farms and ranches, being taken. And there's a reason why they're being taken. And there's a reason why the map, that rock in the dome, is a copy, an exact match of the western United States. Islam believes that that rock represents the holiest place in the world. Hmm. This map shows you that uh, the red and yellow areas are areas you will not be living. This is from Agenda 21 with the United Nations. Here's a transparent overlay showing you the states as they line up to this map that are included. Here's a topography map. Kalelu, Udah, Judah, Judah, Utah, Utah, Judah, Judah. In many instances, this is an exact match. And here very shortly, I'm going to show you how exact it really is. Now, why is this? What is this? It's because I believe that the United States is being prepared to be split in two pieces, maybe three, but two, I believe, at the moment. One is going to be given to the, going to be given to Islam, to the Muslims. That's the piece you're looking at, the Western United States that has been purchased up by the federal government. It's being prepared to be handed over. The Eastern United States will be given to the Zionists. They will have control. On this map here, you can see the arrows pointing to the spots of topography. On the right-hand side, you'll see the three hour arrows that are pointing to what looks like an eye, the top arrow. The lower arrow is pointing to what looks like nostrils. The lower arrow is pointing to what looks like a mouth. 
you can see on the rock all that topography exists and on the topo map of the United States all that all that exists and it is an exact match and even looks like a face and then you have a face in the upper left hand corner as well I understand this is uh, somewhat mind-blowing but this has been shown to me I struggled for a long time trying to figure out why I seen or why it appeared that Islam was being demonized but yet at the same time we have Muslims that have infiltrated our system including Barack Hussein Obama along with many other Muslims including the governor of South Carolina Nikki Haley Nikki Haley is not her name just Google Nikki Haley's real name and it's because we have factions two different factions at least the Zionists and the Muslims that or you might say Islam uh, have a working agreement you might say to split the United States at least into two parts the eastern United States going to the Zionists as you know most of your Zionists uh, come out of Israel and Israel or excuse me the Zionists not the average Jew but the Zionist Jew and there are Zionist Christians and whatever they want to call themselves but they're going to have the eastern United States and the promised land is the United States mm. it's not Israel the promised land that they that the, is the United States they're going to have the eastern United States and the promised land is the United States it's not Israel the promised land that they that the 12 tribes of Israel were promised they believe is the United States mm. and this rock <laughs> in the dome of the rock <laughs> eastern United States and the promised land is the United States it's not Israel the promised land that they that the 12 tribes of Israel were promised they believe is the United States wow. and this rock in the dome of the rock matching it exactly the Western United States is a lock is a lot logic before authority love to Jay Stu man who also reminded me about this drop ancient cartography Did you hear that? Thank you very much. Not one shred of evidence found in the Mideast to say that Solomon and King David, the land of Israel, is even there. You heard it right here. Nothing. But what remains of Solomon's grand legacy in our own time? Did you hear that? Thank you very much. Not one shred of evidence found in the Mideast to say that Solomon and King David, the land of Israel, is even there. You heard it right here. Pay attention.
Your city is hidden. Your cities are hidden. King Hera. See the writing down here. <laughs> Dodge the hijack. Hijack 101 with Joshua, man. Choose your Joshua. Man, so check out uh, Ancient Cartography, man. And you got to pause some of that and just, you know, you know what I'm saying? See what's popping, man. Yeah, triple dismount, man. Love to uh, M.A. Truth, man, who, you know what I'm saying? We going to let the proxy, man, uh, tell him like it really is, man. Stay up. Suit up. Choose up. Let go, let go. Helping the situation? Is it, is he, is he an improvement over Stephen Harper? I mean, <laughs> Listen up. Talk record, is it? Excuse me, did I just hear you correctly? How can he be just, blamed it, with that? No. Excuse me. Excuse me. Right Don't now, speak stop, to us that way. Stop right now. <laughs> you do not speak to us that way. We are human beings. And the way that you're speaking to us... It's not acceptable. You are not no, here. stop it. Stop it right now. You don't, we don't want you here. Can you please leave? Step out. Step out. Step out. No. Then I don't want to hear from you. You have no right. You don't speak to us like that. Simple question. Yeah. And this no. is the problem.